Hi, and I'm back again for another Technique Thursday. And this week I was asked how to use some of my artsy items in my shop. And the first one I'm going to show you is what I call blenders. Why do I call them blenders? Well, because I blend with them. And I blend with them in many different ways. And these are all created from scratch. They're all created from mixed media brushes that Vicki, Green Eyed Lady Designs, and I, and my little Miss Bailey, we make in our art studios and extract them for high quality mixed media brushes. So what you see here first is the actual blender. And I have a white background right behind here so you could see exactly what it would look like if you just put it on a colored background. And if I zoom in, you can see there's actual textures shown in these blenders themselves. And this is over 100%. These are real mixed media brushes, like I said, real gesso used or modeling paste used or done on canvases or watercolor paper, all kinds of things to get these textures. They are awesome. And they're awesome because we create them from those CU brushes. So the first thing you can do is bring in any kind of a paper and just lay it underneath it. And I have a couple files here from my Summer's Fun kit that these were created for. So if I turn on what is, and I'll show you the paper, there's the paper, which is also from a mixed media brush, and I turn on the blender above it, and I have a whole new type of thing. And I can rotate it and everything, of course, too. That's always a capability. Turn that one off, if my mouse will cooperate. And there's what it would look like with a solid color monotone paper. Again, I'm going to turn off the blender and show you how easy that is to create like that. Now one of the other options you can do with blenders is you can take a paper or a solid and you can actually clip it holding that alt option key right between with the little square. You can clip a different paper to it. So now you see the blender and everything. Then when you turn on a paper underneath you get a whole new paper. These are still the three papers that were used in that kit. Very easy. There's a solid one, a paper from that kit behind. And like I say, if I zoom in, you're going to see the texture. And that is what real life is going to look like. And this is about 65%. So this is what it's going to look like when you print something like this. Very versatile. Now, you don't always have to stick with a blender that has been used you know with that kit just because these are blue green and white colors doesn't mean it has to be as I showed you with that one paper but what if I take a paper from a different kit and I'm gonna turn off everything above here so there's your blender once again if I turn on this paper and I clip it to that blender then that's the kind of paper I'm going to get. And if I turn on a background paper underneath here that is just a solid artsy painted paper, the blender on top of it mixes these two together. I have to turn on this one. So you could have that artsy solid paper. Now you're mixing orange in with that blue and green. You turn the blender off again. Blender is on. Or with this other paper clip to it, you can turn that on and the blender has now voided out some of that paper but has left pieces of it around to shine through here. And you can of course rotate things, take them any way you want to, and they're going to blend in totally differently each time you do something with it. We'll just do that with it. If you wanted, like I said, bring a different color in there totally. Turn that on, it would help. Now I have a blue mixed in with that orange paper kit I have. And of course, you can always, you know, dial this and change the opacity of a paper on top, or you can change the opacity and blend in more with the blender itself so you're only getting hints of the other paper behind. It just shows you all the different things that you can do with these and that's basically how brushwork or masking works is 
you can mask you know by clipping these two together just like you do a photo to a shape or something or you can just have the blender itself sitting on top of a different paper makes it really easy to just change your mind and do what you want to do and create probably a couple dozen papers out of maybe three or four original papers so that's how your blenders work so why do I put so many artsy elements in my kits with just a few papers compared to some designers because I like to work with papers and create myself I don't like to depend on somebody else defining what my final layout is going to look like because I like to play it up and, and do what inspires me. So here is just a plain paper. It's one of the cardstocks. has a nice canvas type. Um, it's actually a very thick waterboard texture that I scanned in. I just painted over it with a gesso. So let's pull a couple elements from my kit. And I'm just going to pretend I have photos. So say I put photos in, and I did this on one of my layouts recently, and I'm going to put some photos in there. But that's pretty plain, of course. So let's put in maybe some of the green paint texture. And I'm going to pull it right down here in the corner. And then I want some splatter. And I'm putting this all under where the photos are going to get. And the splatter could be brought in just a hint of it off the side or if I want to get really messy I could put it in here and of course I could always just clip it to the green part and give a total different look like that too or slide it under sky is the limit maybe the greens a little too harsh for me so I want it a little bit more watery or that's a little bit too much so I could double it up that's a soft light now you're seeing down here it just has hints of that what if I change that layer to a multiply and then it's going to come out a lot darker put it back to normal you could bring the opacity down and make it almost translucent and it's kind of disappearing in there but I kinda of like the green and I like the blue above my green so I'm gonna leave that I like ink everybody knows I love ink I splat my ink everywhere. My walls probably do not appreciate it. And maybe I want to arrange that there. And I kind of like, now I think I like it down here. Because I think this balances where I'm going to have the photos in this darker frame. So that's something I would do. I put in journaling spots, of course. In case you're wondering, I'm pulling from my other monitor. I have dual monitors, so don't feel bad here guys it's just how I work I don't go file open I just keep my little finder window open here and I pull it drag it over in here so maybe I have a journal spot which I'm thinking actually would look pretty good up there and my photos will go there and since I'm here I'm going to pick a gray color and I'm just going to use my marquee tool and I'm going to put something here so I can clip my photos so I just surrounded that with the square G for my paint bucket tool and I'm gonna fill that control D to deselect it V so I can zoom in and move and maybe I want my photos outside of it maybe I want them only in it we'll see I kinda like that look though so now I can take these and move them maybe it'll be right about there and then, of course, got to have some splashes of ink and paint and got to put more of that in, but I don't want it over my photos. Maybe I do. That would be kind of cool. Depending upon what the photos were, you could always let a little bit splash over onto your photo. And if you notice, it's going to add some texture in here, too, because there is a little greenish texture in here with the ink. Let's see, though. Let's try this up here. That looks pretty good. If I really liked it and I wanted to add little hints of it more around, maybe I want some of that splashing up from underneath here, coming over here. This is why I put so many artsy elements in my kits because then you can rearrange Alt, holding that click down and Alt key on the v move 
you can duplicate that layer real fast, real easy, rotate it around, lots of doodle work. Got to have lots of doodle work. Actually, just had a great idea. Put that there. I'm going to hold the Alt with my Move again here. I'm going to rotate this. And why I'm going to rotate is I'm going to make it look like these are two little flower petals. Go back to there. I don't even need to, but go back to there. Duplicate it again. I'm going to rotate it this way. And this is how I did my one layout. Now it looks like that. And if this is too much going on out here, say this one, and you can, with your Move tool, just hold your Command um, key here, Command or Control, if you're PC, and I can select on that. I didn't get zoomed in enough. I can select on that. It's going to pick that layer for me. Or another great option is you hold the command and you right click. And it's going to tell you the different layers that are right underneath of here. So you can do it that way too if I hit clicked. Let me do it over here. So you'll see I have three layers. I have the uh, e which, E4, which is that blue. And then I have a green texture. And then I have my paper below. Just another handy on the fly kind of trick you can do. But say I don't want this sweep of that doodle going through, I have two options. I could erase it, which is destructive, or I could add a layer mask to it. And then basically I'm going to paint with black on that layer mask because remember, black conceals, white reveals. And I just picked a round brush, holding my Alt option and my Control key at the same time. I'm going to size that brush up. Which one am I on? Had to remember here. And I'm going to paint. I need to make sure my brush is in normal. And I'm going to paint out that particular one that was right in there. If I don't like, say, this one up here, I can do the same thing if I could pick it. There it is. Add a layer mask to it. And that way, you know, by painting on my layer mask, if I decide, oops, I really didn't want that much, hit my X for the white, and I can bring it right back in and just add a little bit of touch there. Layer masks are a lot easier and non-destructive to be working with than if you were erasing and you changed your mind later or something like that. So it's something that I always do while creating a layout. So what else could we do? I could bring in some brads. I love brads. And I made these larger so that, if I can grab it, so that I could change the sizes of them to make them small little brads or I could make them larger brads and size them any way I want. And say I want like, I like to add little touches here and there. Holding my Alt again, I could even do that by duplicating that layer. Or you can hold your Alt right on the layer and do it, and it'll be right on top of each other. Then I think they need shadow, of course. So I'm going to go in here and pick one of my Brad shadows. And if I don't like it there, take them, rotate them. could do lots of different things. Maybe I want them on top of my paint down here or coming across. If I had uh, no journaling, but I like to show the journaling note. Lots of things you could do with these. I kind of like the white space up there. So I may just put them over here. I like working in the angles, corners and angles. It gives a balance. I have plenty of white space. I could see title work either going vertically here or here or down at the bottom here. Some journaling, or if I wanted a lot of journaling, I could put some journaling in here. Many, many ideas. And that's why I put a lot of elements in my kits that are, some people think, are not elements. Ooh, you know, it would be kind of cool. Maybe a color burn. See how that, the color burn on the white almost disappears, but the color burn on here gives me a new color. I kind of like that too. And of course, you have to have some labels. I have some word art labels in this particular kit. I would bring that up on top of everything so it's sitting up there. Labels to me shouldn't have much of a shadow, just a slight shadow. And that looks good right there. 
um, oh, of course you got to have a flag or some kind of tag, right? So I might put this here. And if you notice on my tags, it already looks like it's being pinned through that paper. So you can count on that for most of my stuff is I pin it already. Saves you from doing it. It's already pinned and it looks, doesn't matter what you put it on. As you can see, if you put it here, you can see that slight shadow like it's pushing up that paper. Very realistic. This looks like it's wrapped around that pin like I would do in real life art. Just some little things that if you don't own one of my kits, you don't see these little things that are going on in here. Good title work here. We'll put, I kind of like this here. Maybe I don't like the title color. Maybe I want it to be an off-white. Shift F5. I'm going to fill with that foreground color with that transparency again. And I don't know why I'm working in verticals today, but I am. And I'm going to size that down so it fits right there. I don't have to use the cutter colors of the title work. Let's pull in another piece of word art title work. And this one to me seems like it would want to be here. I do have a set of photos in mind, just so you are aware. And maybe it's a little big and I want it smaller. Scooch it over with my arrow keys. And that looks like a good layout to me, but it's totally artsy. It doesn't have traditional elements, but it has a lot of other elements in it. I like to work in threes, so I think I'm going to delete that one. Odd numbers, just like gardening. You want to work in odd numbers, threes, fives, sevens. When you work like that, when you do multiple similar elements like that, if you notice, I have three photo spots. I have three elements here that are similar. One's a different color, but they're all similar. If I want it to look a little different, I could rotate it around. I could, um, you know, recolor if I wanted to. I could clip a paper to it if I wanted to. There's an idea. See, I love these little elements, but I don't want it that color. Say I want it to be one of the greens, and I'll pull in one of the green brushwork here, put it over it, clip to that, and I could do it that way. No, it doesn't look like a little bubble any longer, but you could easily do that if you wanted to by clicking in your layer styles and giving it a little bevel and a contour here. Actually, I'm on the wrong. should do it here. And we're going to do it up and we're going to size it so it looks more like a brad. And you could change your light however you want. My light usually goes 45 or 135. Those are the two light sources I work with. But I've changed that totally. You know, there's my original with a style on it, of course. And it's a bigger, and I could change it to be like that if I wanted to. Plus, I could move this so some of that peeks out from below there. And it just looks like some paint has been splattered on there could clear the layer style below and it, now it just looks like paint has been done. I would probably change this to a linear burn, make it take the shape more of it or a color burn would work well also. Then you're just getting a little bit extra and that looks good. Different things that you can do with all the different artsy elements in a kit. So meet me in the next video below where I continue on with this with another technique and using my artsy kits.